Welcome back, everybody, to another film room on the channel. Today, we're going to be breaking down new Steelers inside linebacker Cole Holcomb. Going to be going through the Tennessee Titans game from last season. Going to be going over the good reps, the bad ones, everything in between. Just before we get started, please make sure that you are sub to the channel. Make sure you like the video if you like the content. Let's get it going. All right, so Cole Holcomb, uh, commanders inside linebacker from last season. Signed a three-year, $18 million deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers and free agency. Going to be going over some kind of – just some reps I like from his tape uh, now that I'm a couple games in. Washington is a big uh, middle field open coverage scheme. They're running a little quarters here. Holcomb's responsible for the middle hook. See him doing a good job getting depth. What I like about this play, though, is he's going to get depth and take away this curl, but also read the eyes of Tannehill. And he's starting to actually buzz through this outside hook route. So Tennessee is running what's called Hank. This is just three middle hooks and two flats. And Tannehill gets hit on the throw here, but I actually think that Holcomb's in a pretty good position, even if this throw is to the outside hook. I think he's actually got a good chance at getting a pass breakup on this play. Would have liked to have seen if he was going to be able to get to that one. He's a pretty athletic player. That's something that you'll notice on tape. So he, he can cover some ground pretty quickly. This rep right here was actually my favorite rep of his um, from this game in totality. Uh, Washington is going to be playing quarter, quarter, half. Again, he's just responsible for this middle hook from the number three receiver. He has a what's called a trick safety on the backside, this number 22 that can rob any of these deep crossers, or if he gets vertical, he's got help. So what he needs to do here is maintain his inside leverage and play underneath on that low hip to take away any of these curls at the sticks. I'm going to show you guys this video from the tight. You can see that Tannehill's like eyeing this matchup all the way, but you can see him have to double clutch this ball because Holcomb has such good positioning just to run this thing back. This is what offenses want to do, right? They, they want to make sure that we're getting wide receivers favorable matchups. Anytime you can get a wide receiver matched up on an inside linebacker, usually the offense is going to consider that a win. But in this rep, you know, you see Holcomb, you know, hold up in space, hold up in coverage. That's a good thing to see. You know, I, I wouldn't define him as a coverage linebacker, but he's definitely not a liability or somebody that you necessarily have to take off the field on passing downs either. Um, there are some really encouraging flashes um, from him in coverage to where I think there's maybe some untapped upside there for sure. All right. Really like this one here. Uh, this is a second and short play, I believe. Um, but just a good job reading the flow of the inside line, inside or offensive lineman, excuse me. Um, really like the way that he takes on this puller. So we got this tight end here who's off the line of scrimmage. Does a good job flowing to the ball, flowing to his gap. And then you see near foot, near shoulder. And then he's also able to corral Derrick Henry with one arm here and help make the tackle. He's a pretty stout tackler. You'll see um, throughout this game, you know, some of the one-on-one -on -one reps that he wins in space, which are pretty impressive in my opinion. Uh, he only missed about 8.6% of his tackles last season. That's a pretty respectable number for an inside linebacker. On this play, you get a lot of down blocks. But he does a good job, you know, staying patient, just scraping over the top, following the track of the back. You know, Henry's a difficult guy to get on the ground too. So anytime you get a one-on-one -on -one with him, trying to get him down on the ground without him allowing him to get that yards after contact is a, is a big thing. Not too much to diagnose here. You know, he's just playing as, you know, kind of the whole defender in the middle of the field, but I like guys, especially your inside linebackers, your strong safeties in the middle. I like guys that are going to put a little bit of fear um, into players that are coming into their zones. And, you know, that's a good route, but I think this is Kyle Phillips. Uh, you know, winning quickly on his slant. But I like the the burst and the explosiveness out of Holcomb here, you know, to plant him to the ground. You know, you want these little slot receivers to, you know, think twice anytime they're coming across the middle. And, you know, Holcomb has a little pop to him. You'll see another nice hit on Tannehill later in the game. Really like the angle here on this one. You know, Tennessee's a really zone heavy run team. You know, he's playing the Mike linebacker uh, spot on this play. 
get zone steps from the offensive lineman. You know, he's really easily um, more comfortable when he's able to just kind of run and hit. But I like the angle here. It's going to look like he almost overruns this, but I, I like the angle because it's going to push. Even if he misses here, he's pushing Henry back into his help towards the middle of the field. So really like this one. This, again, is a really good open field tackle here. He's a little bit high. But anytime you can get Henry on the ground, you know, in a one on one situation like that, you know, without allowing a bunch of yards after catch, you know, that's that's pretty impressive. Next play here, we're getting a little man coverage red. Washington is not a very man heavy team, at least in the games that I've watched. But, you know, this this is a little concerning. Um, you know, like I said, he's a little inconsistent in coverage, um, but we just we get a little option or choice route for the running back kind of stop our feet a little bit and then the receipt the running back kind of gets by us and we're we're kind of grabbing at the waist here this is a penalty and then Tannehill kind of escapes the sack a little bit you know steps up in the pocket extends the play we need to be better about plastering the receiver anytime we get like a scramble drill situation or extended play situation your running back's kind of able to, you know, take a check down for a first down. That was third down as well, so that one kind of hurts. Anytime you let a check down, um, you know, go to a first down on third down like that, third and long, it's not never a good thing. This is really impressive just mainly because I think he kind of loses his balance here. Um, you can kind of see he trips over his own guy, but still the fact that he's able to make this tackle – in the open field on Derrick Henry. Just does a good job keeping himself clean, you know, scraping over the top. You know, very, very few yards after contact. You know, he's able to do just enough until his teammates, you know, can kind of come over and help him get that big back on the ground. You can see some of his numbers on the bottom right. I really like this rep. So Holcomb's not a big stack and shed guy. He's really a guy that you want to try to keep clean when when offensive linemen are able to get to the second level on him, he's not a guy who's going to consistently stack and shed with physicality, you know, kind of different from like a, in a Landon Roberts that they just signed. But what I like about Holcomb is he can use his athleticism, his burst and some of his agility to kind of slip blocks. And you see him do that here, you know, just being patient, but, you know, kind of reducing the surface area, dipping it, dipping that shoulder, able to wiggle through, you know, shooting the backfield to make a tackle for a loss. Of course, it's nice. You know, he has the benefit of playing behind one of the best defensive lines in the league. You know, this Washington front with Payne and Allen and all those guys, uh, Chase Young when he's healthy is pretty, pretty dynamic. But, you know, I just – I appreciate the patience, and I, I think that's kind of how he's going to win whenever blockers are going to get to the second level. It's going to be, you know, him trying to win with, you know, some more finesse than just straight physicality. It's a red zone rep. Um, this one's tough, man, because this is a this is a red zone, a familiar red zone concept that's you know league wide. You get this number three receiver against a pole running middle linebacker, and that's kind of how offenses like to attack these like Tampa two shells um, in the red zone. To me, this one's tough because I think he needs to do a better job, you know, just playing with more urgency here and kind of closing this distance. You know, he's already on top of this, but he kind of needs to flip and run and close this space down while also establishing a contact key with this tight end. So you can see there's just a lot of space here to where the receiver, we're not disrupting the route timing. We're not disrupting his route whatsoever. So he kind of has just a free run at the goalpost. You know, this, this play actually ends up being an incompletion only because the tight end drops the ball. But really, we want to close this space, get in phase after we flip our hips. And then when this ball is thrown high back five, we really want to play the hands and go chest to chest with this tight end. But you see, because he's not really in phase, he's not really even able to contest this at the catch point. I'll show you guys this one more time from the back view. Really, and this is a really good throw from Tannehill. I'll say that too. Sometimes, you know, really good throws. It, it may have not even mattered if he closed the space here and created that contact because this is this is a dime. But we really want to make sure that we're at least in position to play through the hands and go chest to chest with this guy in, in the back five of the of the end zone. 
So, you know, look, there are some flashes in coverage for sure. But again, he's he's a little up and down in that regard. But he's athletic enough to where, you know, there's definitely some upside there, in my opinion. Wanted to show this one just because, you know, it ends up being a gain of, I think, six yards or something like that. But, you know, Holcomb has that sideline to sideline speed. I think he might have been able to get there a little bit faster. Maybe if Payne does it kind of fall back in his track a little bit and kind of cause him to slow up. But he, he's got the speed to run sideline to sideline. That's kind of what he's, you know, kind of best at using that athleticism. He's a run and hit guy to where, you know, you can trust that he's not going to get out leveraged or out flanked to the, you know, to the boundary very often. Again, just really, really sound tackling, man. Just playing, playing our keys. You know, here he's playing kind of on the weak side. You know, they're able to keep him clean, but he's just going to shoot this gap, you know, kind of this B gap and fill. Anytime you get a guy like Derrick Henry, you know, and you're able to, you know, get low, stack him like that. And then you see Henry, you know, he's not really going forward anymore. Of course, he's got some help from his teammates. But anytime you're able to stand a guy like Henry up, man, like that's really impressive. You want to get low on guys like that. Make sure that you're, you know, driving your feet. You know, and he does that. He, he's a pretty sound tackler. I, I like the tackling technique, too. One thing that you also notice with with Washington, you know, with him as the Mike linebacker, he's always the, one, the guy making a lot of these checks. So you get a three by one kind of motion here to trips you see him making calls you know they're making a check here you know Tennessee's gonna roll Tannehill out here this is another one of those hits that I was telling you about just really like the physicality you know the 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 closing speed this is third down I'm not really sure why the Titans are you know splitting the field in half but you know I, I just like the physicality here the closing speed the burst and then you know again just like those slot receivers man if those those quarterbacks want to you know run and use their legs you got to punish those guys if he's not going to go out of bounds he's going to try to turn this up field try to get this first down you know make him think twice about that next time you know and that's a that's a tough hit you see everybody on the sideline getting jacked up you know that's that's what you want to see right there from your inside linebacker Overall, man, I, I'm encouraged by the tape. I definitely think he's going to be um, probably the Steelers' three-down inside linebacker for this coming season. I still think they're going to add a draft pick to the room probably within the first day or two of the NFL draft. But Holcomb, he's a good enough athlete, and there's enough flashes in coverage to get me on board with you know his potential fit within the Steelers' defense. Um, I, I think that there's some upside there, and I think that he's a really good player when you're able to keep him clean um, from those offensive linemen climbing to the second level. If you can keep him clean, he can be a good run defender for you. Then I think his athleticism, you know, could lead to some potential coverage upside as well um, down the road. So, again, if you guys uh, stayed around for the entirety of this video, I really appreciate you all. Just please make sure that you all like the video. Make sure you're sub to the channel. We'll be back with tons more content for the rest of the week. Peace.